In 1897, J.J. Thomson discovered the electron, and more importantly, discovered the charge to mass ratio. 12 years later, in 1909, Robert Milligan did a series of experiments to determine the actual value for the charge on the electron. In this short video, I'm going to summarize Robert Milligan's work by using a simplified model so that you can understand the basic concepts. Now he set up a chamber, a mist of oil that he inserts into this chamber that he has charged using x-rays. Those oil droplets fall between these two plates, which are charged, so therefore have an electric field across them. And he uses a microscope to examine those tiny oil droplets. Let's take a closer look, shall we? What we have here is an oil drop that is stationary, which means it's experiencing two forces in opposite direction. The first is the force due to the electric field, which is equal to EQ. The other force it's experiencing is a force in the downward direction, which is the force due to gravity, which is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Because these two forces are equal, we can therefore equate those two equations. EQ is equal to mg. Now, how is E determined? Well, E is determined by the voltage that is applied between these two plates and the distance between those two plates. And so we'll replace the E with the VQ over D is equal to mg. We need to rearrange this to determine the charge. And so the charge is equal to mgd over voltage. But you may be wondering, how did Robert Millikan determine the mass of the oil drop? He knew the density of the oil drop. And all he had to do was, with his microscope, determine the volume by measuring the diameter of that particular oil drop. What we end up getting, rho, the density of the oil, multiplied by the volume, and I'm going to use a lowercase v here for the moment, multiplied by g, multiplied by d, over the potential difference. As a result, he was able to determine the charge. Now he did this thousands of times to get 175 suitable data points. And what he noted was that each of the values of the charges of the oil drops that he measured were all multiples of a certain value. Now I liken it like this. Imagine I gave you a series of numbers, 6, 12, 15, 18, 27, 33. You see a pattern. They are all multiples of three. Similarly speaking, Robert Millikan, by measuring those charges of many oil drops, noticed that there were all multiples of a particular value. And that value approximates to 1.6 by 10 to the negative 19 coulomb. And so he discovered the charge of an electron. Now it is important to note this is a simplified model. There's more details. Robert Millikan wasn't able to suspend his oil drop to make it stationary. Instead, he measured the oil drops that were moving at a constant velocity. Newton's first law still applied. However, he now also had to account for the fact that there was another force at play, and that is the force of drag. Now that drag is determined by how fast the velocity is, and secondly, the size of the oil drop. His calculations were a little bit more complex than the ones I have presented here. Needless to say, his results and his conclusions significantly added to our understanding of matter. And therefore, he's a worthy Nobel Prize recipient. If you want a greater analysis of Robert Millikan's work, check out my longer video. Please like, share and subscribe. Buy me a coffee to support my work. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care. Bye for now.